It was the wake of the 2012 general elections in Ghana. The stakes were high. Tensions were gradually reaching crescendo levels. The entire nation was sitting on tenterhooks as politicians argued over who got the people's knot to form the next government. But who could calm the tensions and how? I had received quite a call from some members of the Church of Pentecost uh, asking Apostle, what are you doing, Chair? What are you doing? We think things are not going on. By then, there had been an announcement on the NPP. Sir John had made that announcement. And many people were calling. So soon after that, Prof also called me and said, Apostle, what do you think? And uh, because of what happened, uh, I thought we could just come ar uh, around and quickly uh, make a statement to calm the people. And then quickly he came and um, as the chairman of the Church of Pentecost, I was living at Rich, which is very close to press center. So quickly we went there and I liked the way Emmanuel he spoke, the questions that were thrown to him, the way Emmanuel he, he answered them. I thought it was very good and it, it, it arrested a possible chaos or disaster in the country. Meet the Most Reverend Professor Emmanuel Kweku Asante, a Ghanaian statesman, Kenji-made academic, devoted theologian, distinguished clergyman, accomplished scholar, eloquent conference speaker, a great author of several books, and indeed, a man of many parts. He is the current chairman of the National Peace Council and interim chairman of the Council of Ghana's peer review mechanism a fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, a past presiding bishop of the Methodist Church Ghana, the immediate past president of the Bible Society of Ghana, a past chairman of the Christian Council of Ghana, a past president of the Trinity Theological Seminary, a former head of Department of Religious Studies, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, and the list goes on and on. Professor Asante was born to the late Nana Kufi Apia and Ajua Konama, alias Ajua Efrimu, on 12 April 1950 at Ejura in the Ashanti region of Ghana, where he hails from. He spent his early days as a boy in Ejura with his grandmother, Nana Chewa, following his parents' separation. Ejeku, as he's popularly known, stayed with both parents at various points in life and later sojourned to Accra, where he stayed with his uncle, who was a policeman. Little Kweku Asante completed elementary school in 1965 at the L.A. Anglican School in Ejira, after which he stayed home for a year before setting for the late entrance exams to feather his education at Salem Secondary School in Accra, where he stayed with his uncle. Due to financial difficulties, little Ejeku dropped out of secondary school in the second year and went back to Kumasi to stay with his mother at Bantuma in 1968. Although out of school, little Kweku was determined to further his education and looked for avenues to achieve this long-cherished dream. Whilst at it, he received a calling to serve the Lord. Although he was born into Christianity, Ejeku had not fully surrendered his life to the Lord. Even as a young man, Ejeku had several religious experiences as he recounted in a recent interview. Whilst in Kumasi, Professor Asante joined a Christian fellowship that often met at KO. Through the activities of the fellowship, his faith in the Lord 
was deepened. This even led him to distribute Bible tracts in schools. He became a freelance evangelist, spreading the gospel in Kumasi and traveling as far as Akusumbu in the eastern region of Ghana to share the word of God. I think Atakwa FK 2005 ish or about, when somebody asked a question that, oh, Reverend Santi, when you were an evangelist, you were fiery. Then you come to the ministry and you're so docile. And this man got up and characteristically said, hey, nee, you know, that type of thing, you know, uh, it, 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 it makes him unique. And so he started as an evangelist and he has grown to become an academic, but hasn't lost the evangelical zeal in him. And you can see it whenever he preaches, apart from teaching, uh, that but when he's preaching and he's touching on the spread, of the gospel, you can still feel in him that uh, this is somebody who is, is, a, is a tool in the hands of the master. In the course of time, Professor Asante enrolled for adult education and studied Bible knowledge and English. Like his secondary education, the adult education pursuit was short-lived as he placed more priority on his newfound faith in Christ Jesus. Through an encounter with foreign missionaries from the work mission and some indigenous Christian evangelical missions, which culminated in the establishment of the then Christian Service College, now University College in Kumase, Professor Asante had the opportunity to enroll for a three-year diploma program as one of the pioneer students of the college, although he did not have the required ordinary level qualification. He later studied at the London Bible College, now London School of Theology, in London, UK, Ottawa University, and St. Paul University, all in Ottawa, Canada, and most recently at the Kofi Annan International Peace Training Centre. Most Reverend Professor Asante is married to Comfort, and between them they have three young married professionals, Emmanuel, Paul, and Jerry, together with three stepchildren from his wife's previous marriage. But what are some of his unique qualities? Probably his love for, for Jesus. If you know my father at all, one of the first things you're going to notice if you ever get close to him is that he has a genuine love for, for Jesus. From his evangelical days through his ministry, I would say it's one of the things that underpins his personality. Um, definitely. I would say it would be his love for Jesus. So my dad is one of the few individuals that has a very strong executive presence. His command over, over a room, his confidence when he walks into a room, he's very hard to ignore. As usual, himself. He is always himself. Very brilliant. Somebody who wants to contribute to the development and growth of the church. He is such a magnetic personality that uh, he will attract you. And once he hooks your attention, and, and that should be forever because. You wouldn't do anything which will cause you to detach yourself from him. He's very demeanor and even the color of his voice are so infectious that um, you love to always listen to him. A consummate academic, Professor Asante has served and continues to serve a number of tertiary institutions in Ghana, including the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology as a part-time lecturer, the University of Ghana and Akrofi Kristala Institute as an external examiner in religious studies. 
In his capacity as presiding bishop of the Methodist Church Ghana, Most Reverend Professor Asante has served as chairman of the council and boards of a number of educational institutions, including the Methodist University College Ghana, Wesley College of Education, Wesley Girls High School, and Infancipan School, all in Cape Coast. He has served as the chairman of the Council of the Christian Service University College, where for many years he also taught as an adjunct lecturer. A past president of the Trinity Theological Seminary, Legon, many of Professor Asante's colleagues have fond memories of him. Uh, Prof is very approachable. When we first met him at Tech at KNUSD, when he first arrived from overseas, because we did not have a chaplain as a university, any time we called on him, he came. And I remember times when we had joint programs, we needed a minister to come and administer the communion, we'll call on him and he will come. So he was easy to get. Uh, you don't need to book a long appointment to be able to get him. I usually like preaching that has a very strong evangelical and biblical tone. The first preaching I heard was of that orientation. It was very biblical, it was very evangelical, and it was quite charismatic. Um, when I say charismatic, it means it was delivered with a certain level of passion. So um, I was privileged to be in that service, and I thought, well, this is somebody from whom you can learn a lot. But mercifully, during my probationary period, and we used to have probation at the then Freeman College, he was one of the instructors. Uh, I remember very well he used to uh, teach us things to do with Christianity and culture. So I would say in a sense, although he was a senior friend, he was also my teacher in the sense of one of the people who taught us at probation. I had already left the seminary and when he came to the seminary, it was through him, and I have to give him credit for that, that I became an adjunct lecturer in Christian education at the Trinity Theological Seminary. So we became now colleagues, if you like, at the first. But uh, teaching, yes, not as directly, but as I said, trying to make sure that everything Asante is read. So everything he wrote, whether he knew it or not, I would have read it. Whether he gave it to me or not, I was, and then I'll read him also outside the church. You know, otherwise, he might have written certain materials, you know, outside the church, certain books. Either he has been quoted or something. So anything Asante, I started reading. So I was learning from him directly and also indirectly. In 1999, Professor Asante will become the first president. We changed the nomenclature from principal to president. The kind of... Um, new ideas, introductions that he injected into the seminary life. Talk of courses that he introduced and how applicable those courses were. Um, a course like Church and Society, which became his baby. I remember very well um, in Trinity, introducing all those courses and uh, he jumping into those courses and teaching them. If the president himself is so engrossed into the academic life of the seminary, the lecturers will, will all follow suit. He taught a lot of courses. And for that, you would appreciate um, his versatility. So, so versatile that uh, he, 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 he can flow in, in, so, in so many places. Professor Asante has nurtured many accomplished Methodist and non-Methodist ministers who consider him a mentor. During my student days, he was the president of the seminary and somebody we all uh, held in very high esteem. He was also our lecturer. He taught us a number of courses including Jesus the Christ, one of the courses we, a lot of people, a lot of students feared, but which, of course, some of us also enjoyed. He's evangelically evangelistic. Uh, because of his evangelistic life, he manifests it 
not just in communicating the gospel, but communicating it evangelically, making sure that the essence of the cross is seen or heard in whatever he communicates. Most Reverend Professor Asante is a distinguished clergyman and a devoted theologian with several decades of service in the Lord's vineyard. He has spent most of his years shepherding the Lord's flock in several capacities, from Bishop of Kumasa Diocese to the presiding Bishop of the Methodist Church Ghana. Most Reverend Professor Asante is a household name across the connection. He stands by his faith and he is a true Methodist. The power behind his, his sermons was such that you always left his uh, service thinking about what he has mentioned and what he has preached. He was a man of great in-depth, such that on the spell of a moment, you ask him a question and he is ready to give you an answer that will satisfy you. Professor Sante, if you are not careful, you might think he's not so inviting. I've mentioned that he tackles issue with all seriousness. Uh -huh. And he's, he's someone who is also bold. And he doesn't quite often um, shelve his feelings. Uh, if he has to say, he will say it. Uh -huh. So if you are not careful, you might think that, hey, this man, how can I go to him? But when you get cruise, so humble, so friendly, so welcoming. Because anything he's doing, he makes sure that he approaches it with that seriousness. Uh -huh. And his own life, you know, as he has told me, he started as an evangelist, freelance evangelist. Those days, uh, we did not even have commission evangelists in the church. Uh -huh. But he had that passion for God's work and evangelizing. So he has preached in the markets, in the streets before when he was in the MYF. And then they formed a kind of fellowship called the Upper Room Ministry. And this Upper Room Ministry brought together um, members from various churches for spiritual upbringing. And he was their leader. And he was able to nurture these people, to bring them to a level that they became very useful to the various churches where they have been worshiping. He has never preached, you know, many a sermon that I have heard without drawing people's attention to the Christ factor. In other words, as he challenges people in his sermons or his addresses, uh, mostly he wants to draw people to Christ. And that also, that's where you see him as an evangelist, okay? And then I, I also mentioned I have experienced him as a, a Christian, uh, I mean, a theological educator and theology is about thinking about God. And he has always maintained that, you know, theology must serve the needs of the church. So you are a theologian because the church wants you to help them to think through issues, you know, you know theologically. And that's how I've experienced it. As a presiding bishop of the Methodist Church, I was also experienced you know, as somebody who is able to articulate, you know, his views, you know, across and trying to make us to think not only theologically, but also ecclesiastically. You know, his uh, understanding of the church. For you to be a presiding bishop of the Methodist Church or any church, head of a church, your ecclesiology should be very, very, very solid. And his understanding of the church as a through laos, that is the people of God, is one something that I really, really decided to deliberately study from him. He is convinced of whatever he says, and he says it so well. He does what he believes in, and he does it so well. It is unique. You can't copy him. You can't copy what he does. It's given him. I could see he's the type of person who can help everybody. The humility is, is the one that I, I can't forget. And he's always ready to support people 
to give advice so that all of us together can move on. In a nation that many believe is polarized often along partisan lines, a respected voice like that of Professor Asante is most imperative and dearly cherished. He has been active in the national space, particularly in the Fourth Republic, promoting peaceful coexistence, especially among political parties in Ghana. As a past chairman of the Christian Council of Ghana and current chairman of the National Peace Council, Professor Asante has on several occasions been called to duty to keep the peace. I'm doing this on behalf of the communicable bodies. Not all of them may get the opportunity, but you have worked hard and you have been an example to us. And we will forever uh, be grateful to this, the foundation that you and others have laid for us to maintain the ecumenical spirit that we can work together. Better this praise be Catholic, Pentecostal, Muslim, traditional leaders, MPP, NDC, CPP. We can work together. You have been an example to us and we are grateful to you. Thank God for such a gift to this nation. He is such an indescribable gift to this nation. And we need to honor him to the highest level. And we need to do something for him whilst he is alive. And I believe the best tribute we can pay, the best honor we can bestow on him is for us to actualize the peace he preaches. Because without peace, we will spell the doom or disaster of unthinkable consequences for this country. So let's not only internalize the peace Professor Santi preaches, let's reflect the peace, all of us, the political class, the business class, under Ghanaian, especially the media practitioners, we should internalize and reflect the wholesome peace Reverend Professor Santi preaches day and night. It is not the government who elects somebody or who appoints a president or a chairperson for the um, National Peace Council. It is the members ourselves who appoint a chairman. So we appointed him uh, the chairman for our first term and second term too because of the good work that he did. One of his unique quality is what he says during time, times of crisis. Whenever there is a crisis and he comes out to speak, he is able to articulate his views or the views of the council, for instance, Peace Council, very accurately and in a form that people would understand it. And, and I cherish that quality of him. I, I, I really, really like it. Professor Asante is the proud co-winner of the 2012 Eminent African Peacemakers Award, awarded by the Christian Award Trust and the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. He also has, to his credit, the 7th Martin Luther King Jr. Award for Peace and Social Justice awarded by the MC of the United States of America, Accra, Ghana. These and many more awards make him a very distinguished church leader, statesman, and academic. In May 2020, the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, appointed Professor Asante to serve on the International Bodies Peace Building Fund Advisory Group. The 10-member group consists of eminent persons across the globe. The United Nations Peace Building Fund is the organization's financial instrument of first resort to sustain peace in countries or situations at risk or affected by violent conflict. We share in this great achievement. And uh, we, we, we see it as something that is brought to the nation and more especially to the Methodist Church. Because wherever he goes, he does not shy away from being a Methodist minister. And we have also assured him 
that our prayers are behind him and uh, wherever he goes, we will support him you know, whatever needs that has to come. So it's a great achievement and we share in that joy. We say praise be to God. It's, it's an honor to us, our church and our country and those who know him so well. He's a gem. Professor Asante is a prolific writer with several publications to his credit. He has authored and co-authored a number of peer-reviewed works in the form of books and articles in social ethics, systematic theology, Old Testament studies, and missions. Professor Asante has always written in a way that average pastors can read. You know, so if you look at all his books, um, they are written such that an average pastor can read. Um, and I think that is one of the things that I have picked up from him. After 39 years of successful service in the Methodist Church Ghana, the Most Reverend Professor Emmanuel Kweku Asante supernoids from active service as a Methodist minister this year. I congratulate you. I ask for God's blessings upon you and your family, especially Mama Comfort and the children. I will want to say this now, say it hundred times and more, that we have been able to keep our country, this country called Ghana, together, especially when it comes to elections. It's the doing of the Lord, but some of the sacrifices you and others have made over the years you've made significant contribution to the cohesion and peace of this country. This, nobody can take it away from you, including your enemies. We salute you for that. The prof, for the advocacy ministry that you have lived for, if either you set up a center, how exactly, I don't know. But my prayer is that God will give you strength to mentor many people in the advocacy ministry. How do we engage? How do we bring faith into public life? How do we bring the relevance of the gospel to everyday life? How do we handle spirituality in such a way that spirituality does not remain in the cathedral, but spirituality is also in governance. Spirituality is also in public life. You have done it. You have stories to tell. And I'm praying that if you're not only in this country, that people will come from elsewhere to learn. They may read your books and your articles, but if you can have a center somewhere that people who are coming to offices as new presiding bishop, bishop, moderators, may want to come to learn from you, how do we play the politics, you know, church and state, MPP, NDC, engaging Muslims, engaging traditional leaders, engaging foreign agencies. How do we do it till you have your last breath? Prof, don't stop talking. Uh, most Reverend uh, Prof. Simon Asante, I hear that when you are most Reverend, there's nothing beyond that. So we thank God that in both the academy and the church, you rose to the highest level that anybody can rise to. Um, you can hold yourself as a proud servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have served well. We all recognize your contributions to church and society. You have served God and country to the best of your ability. And once again, we wish you well. We wish you God's blessing. Anytime we hear from you or about you will know that it will be greater things that God is doing. Kumasi das is edo ewe huwa ye hon. Mi jidi se mete tra sore gane na aso do uwe huwa ye hon. Ye da wasi. Ye bo mpaisu nya mima uyi chre na uwe tume uwe nkwa kura bo mpunu uwe tume abuwa nchirimba na unyamie jumane gana mai akwa so nkanka mete disa sore. Most Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante. On behalf of my family, I would like to thank God for the opportunity to have met and interacted with you. May the Lord continue to multiply you and increase you in all things. You are superannuating, but you have 
not yet left the work of the Lord. May the Lord continue to use you in other ways to do greater exploits for him. Yeah, Prof, we thank God for your life and we thank God for how you serve Ghanaians and as such you serve the Lord God Almighty who has called you to this uh, divine uh, service. We think that you have served your generation. And as you retire, may he restore you, refresh you, and continue to let you be a gift to humanity. May the Lord continue to be with you and your entire family. Amen. Ejeku, what the Methodist people would want to say is that you have made a mark in the Methodist church. The people called Methodists in Ghana, in Africa, and the world, we see you as a champion, as someone who stood for the peace, the integrity, and the development of the Methodist people. And we say we love you. May the good Lord always be with you. Even in superannuation, may your strength never go down. And may you continue to be a blessing unto generations yet unborn. God bless you. Like King David, Professor Asante considers himself an undeserving recipient of God's unmerited favor. He agrees with the psalmist that he also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the merry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Psalm 42 to 3. Amen. Amen.